Hello, welcome back to VS Live. Today I'm going to talk about how to convert a point cloud into voxel art. And so, what is point cloud and voxel? First of all, uh, point cloud is a type of 3D data where you capture the 3D and saving it as points. And the point has color, usually color data, normal data, and it looks a little bit like this unlike the normal 3D mesh, for example, like this 3D uh, bike, with a 3D mesh, you have surface and shaders, etc. With, with point cloud, uh, you, you really have just a point, bunch of points. So I have a couple of examples here. You can actually download um, the original data, like in this case, uh, this pig statue. You can download it as PLY. So this is the normally uh, typical point cloud data comes in this format. So with a PLY, um, you can convert it into Vox, Vox format. This is the process that I want to show you through. Uh, so this is an app that will convert uh, all, all of this point cloud type of data into Vox. Okay, so it, it's, uh, it seems complicated, but you basically provide it with a, an image, for example, like this, and you're gonna get 3D voxel. This is uh, if you zoom closely, this is like a, almost like a Lego or Minecraft kind of art. Same example here. This one is actually using JS placement, and this one is using fractal. You can get really detailed. So working with point cloud and voxel. And actually, I'm going to show you the, the example inside Magica Fox Cells and then bring it into Blender. So, first of all, you need to download this app. The app itself is it's going to work for Windows because it's, it is an EXE. So, you download from the release. You also need to have this .NET runtime <coughs> library. But anyway, you download, go to the release page and download the a version. As a zip, and I already have it here. It's called file to box, and it is exe. You cannot on a Mac. You cannot just run it. But I'm gonna show you uh, how I'm doing it. So you can compile this app yourself. However, uh, you you run you run the conversion using terminal commands gonna show you an example so I have a couple of PLY here it's ready to be converted so I have the, the pig I have this uh, rainbow sofa so I'm gonna show you how I converted the rainbow sofa okay hopefully this is clear It's small maybe. so you need to run it like this .NET file to fox.dll and then this info and you want to okay let's convert rainbow oops Gonna save it as rainbow, rainbow X. Okay, it's gonna look at this file called rainbow.py, scale it to 50%, and save it as rain, rainbow X. Run this app, it's gonna process through the PLY data, look at the point cloud data, and it's gonna convert it into box or like a Lego or like a voxel. Okay, so the process will take a bit of time. In the meantime, I will open this app called Magica Foxel. So this will go inside Magica Foxel, and because we are working with Foxel data, sometimes the data is quite big. Um, from point cloud into Voxel, into something that you can process inside Magica Foxel into 
Blender. Okay. So I'm done with this. If I open, oh, it's actually still processing. Interesting. Okay, we have the file here, Rainbow X. This is the one that we just created. Okay, this is the result. This one, uh, inside Magica Voxel, it, it is exactly just like what you want. It's like a, like a Minecraft box Voxel. And file, file to Fox actually doing some clever processing uh, with the point cloud. And you can quantize it. You can making it as blocky as possible, high res or low res. And you have this palette as well that you can work with. And furthermore, because this is inside Magica Voxel, we can render this out as a Lego. So because I'm recording, this might be a bit slow. So instead of cube, you have these options to turn it into a Lego on render time and it looks pretty realistic okay if I zoom in you can see so this is of course Magica Foxel and it has its own rendering engine similar to Blender Cycles sometimes it is more realistic inside Magica Foxel because of um, what do they call it not just ray tracing, just uh, there's a lot of options with the render, I cannot remember. But anyway, so with this already a voxel, you simply export it into a format that Blender can understand, OBJ. You can export it as PLY, but I'm just going to do it as OBJ, Rainbow X, save it into download. And it's going to spit out obj files obj and textures um, already so it's already um, a good format that you can open in, in blender or export into sketchfab for example so I, while blender is opening i want to show you also a couple of other examples so like this uh, Rabbit on sofa. This one is pretty cool. Okay, rotations. Select all. Like to rotate it. Okay. This is something that is I scan as um, point cloud. <coughs> I remember. Or was it point cloud or but basically okay I scan this as point cloud using my iPhone and it's either using polycam polycam AI or every point or sidescape app so the app will take the point cloud data and then I can bring it here and I, I can make this kind of Lego looking creations so but that's basically the process and you render it as Lego and yeah let's stop this so working with voxel is actually quite interesting because it's a it's a box point cloud data um, and you can kind of resample it into anything so it's not just from, so from points you can turn it into box or it, it can just instance anything it's instead of just box it, it can be anything so so let's import the resulting voxel uh -huh. so it comes as multiple obj and blender cannot import multiple obj unless you use an add-on so we're gonna try to import it one by one import obj Right click, add to quick favorites, tap Q, 
import a widget. So I should have um, installed the add-on to download multiple OBJ. But this can do the job. Just need to do this one by one for now. Okay, that's the result, right? So far, view, frame selected. So this is the, the rainbow bench. It comes with a texture, it's already baked. Texture and shader. And you can actually export this out as AR. Which is pretty cool. Let's continue with the importing. We only have two more, so it's not too bad. So this is static. However, um, there's an app called Record 3D App that I showed you before. It can capture animated point cloud at 30 frames per second um, <clears throat> at maximum. And so you can have like an animated voxel Lego. So it's almost like a stop motion. Okay, so this is the result in Blender. You can merge now, merge all the OBJ and then merge the vertices and then export it out as GLB and then as USDZ. So the whole process is quite a lengthy process, but it's a it's cool. It's really cool that you can do this. Okay. So this is uh, an example. Save it here. Okay. So I'm in the in a new working environment. That's why it's uh, asking me for permissions. So if we go back to the rainbow bench here, change the scale into 20. This thing will make a smaller voxel. It's gonna be like low res. If you keep the scale at 100, it's gonna use all the point cloud. But if you make it like a smaller number, the result is actually going to be um, low res. So let's go back, have a look at Rainbow X. Uh, yes. Okay, see, this is the bench. This one uh, is much more low res than before. Right, and if you render this as Lego, this is gonna be kind of cute because it's like smaller resolutions, and it's it it looks exactly like the Lego. Actually, we can of course go high res, but this is just me showing you the process. I'll show you also this pig. This is the pig. Lower resolutions. This is a pig statue. And this is a big statue with much higher resolutions. And it's already a voxel. So from point cloud into voxel, all box quality like this. You might like this. Some people actually don't like this. It, it depends because th with 3D you can you can do anything. Uh, so like I say, this is the original point cloud, which is just dots. Some people actually the dots itself is actually quite interesting. It's not it's not just like a dots that I you can edit it and you can make the dots larger or smaller. And if you know JavaScript, you can really work on the point cloud, turning it into particles that can react and uh, with turbulence. This is really cool. This is uh, I'm using Sketchfab. I not now. So with Sketchfab, you can change the point size. So this is still point cloud data. The original point cloud is like this. It's the one I captured using the iPhone LiDAR. Turn on and off the vertex color. OK. Yeah, this is cool. Point cloud is cool. Uh, but of course, from this point cloud, sometimes the point cloud can overlap with each other and sort of uh, 
so the file file to fox app what this actually does is kind of a clever interpolations uh, what do you call it or just to make it efficient so i think overlapping vertices will get um, merged together into a single color or something so yeah uh, you can actually import um, you can make like a voxel data from slices of image so that's also a really really cool ideas to try like this fractal um, I want to try this at some point but anyway usually for the final 3d I, I once this is inside blender you can really do anything with it you know combine it remesh it turning it into animations well just now I just select all the over J and then command J and then merge vertices by distance so this is so that everything is becoming a single object you might want to do this or you might not want to do this it's up to you okay done so now you can export this if you can if you see if, if it's too smooth you might want to turn off auto smoothing on the normal so it's more like voxel pixelated quality it's very stylized and in blender because this is in blender you can add your own lighting and render as render it using ev or cycles ev real time render engine cycles less real time more realistic some people would just be happy to render inside uh, Magica Voxel. Um, the motion graphics 3D artists usually prefer something like this. In the future, probably from point cloud into Voxel, you can just turn it into like a normal mesh using Remesher. Yeah, Blender. Actually, Blender Remesher can perhaps just remesh everything into an object. All right. So that's the whole process. Hopefully you find this useful and interesting. Yeah, this type commands to run the app to do the conversions might be scary at first, but it's, uh, it's useful to know this kind of thing, especially if you're a 3D artist uh, or technical artist. Um, yeah, so thanks to Zarbos for this tools very useful um yeah hopefully you find this useful thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time thank you bye